So it was a Friday. I took the day off work. I was bow fishing for probably, oh, about an hour, and I shot just huge, just this great big carp. Got it in the boat, and I'm pretty pumped, and what time it was, probably two o'clock. I decided I was gonna head back up river and see if I can't find somebody to take a picture of this fish that I shot, because I was getting ready to call it a day. As I'm going by the campsites, I see you know some people out enjoying the day on their lawn chairs. And I just about turned the boat to go over to them. But something told me just now nah, there's probably some people up at the dam. As I was getting up there, there was there was no boats up there, which was surprising. I seen this big group of people on the beach. The area where they were on that day, there had been quite a bit of a current and a little bit of an eddy in a back bay down below the dam at, on here at Lake Red Rock. You always think that that water's safe and that you can wade out in, but there was areas where it would drop off, I mean, dramatically. I noticed some kids were screaming in the water and, you know, thrashing their arms. And I got a little bit too far in and um, lost some footing, and then once the kids started to go, the adults started to follow to try to help them. Well, when the adults started thrashing and, you know, looked like there was just pure chaos and panic up there. That's when I knew it was going bad and it was going bad in a hurry. And I just throttled it as fast as I could and get up there and they're waving me, you know, having me come up there. And there, I don't know how many people were in the water, but there was a lot. You know, everybody's screaming. There's kids are thrashing, adults are thrashing. Nobody's swimming. There's no life jackets anywhere. And I tried to get my boat in line to where I could get the most amount of people in the first swipe, you know, kind of getting in there. And a couple of them grabbed the side of the boat. I mean, I'm throwing the four life jackets that I got. I'm throwing them out, trying to hit, you know, as many people as I can, all while trying to steer the boat and pull people out of the water and get them into the boat. And I couldn't tell you how many I got the first, the first way that it was kind of stuck in, you know, it was in drive because I was trying to steer it and I'd run up and pick somebody, you know, and pick another person. And next thing you know, we're at the beach. So everybody gets off really quick. And, you know, I look back and there's at least three or four more in the water. And so I put it in reverse. And the last three people that I picked out of the water, I'll never, I'll never forget pulling, pulling them out of the water. One of them, all you could see was her hair. I thought she was dead. And, you know, I reached down there and I grabbed her arm and I pulled her into the boat. And she was lifeless when she got in the boat. But once I pulled her out of the water, she started groaning a little bit. And I thought, and I knew she was she was going to be okay. And then the next one is a hand. All I can see is a hand. Grabbed her hand, you know. And this is like, you know, you feel superhuman. It's like you're throwing people in left and right. And same thing. She. She seemed lifeless when I pulled her out of the water, but she, you could tell she was groaning a little bit. I said, okay, she's fine. And then I looked and I see this little girl, you know, perfect dead man floating position. And I knew that she was gone. And I had picked her up and I pulled her in the boat. And I knew as soon as she hit the bottom of the boat, she needed help and she needed it bad. So I just, my just started CPR right away, right away. And you could tell she wasn't breathing. There's water coming out of her mouth. There's water coming out of her nose. And I'll never forget that face of her in the bottom of my boat, just lifeless. Just this little seven-year-old girl. And immediately just started pumping on her chest and, you know, giving the breaths. And all the while, I can still hear the family screaming, you know, that my uncle, my uncle, they're screaming that there was you know, more people in the water. And I was, as I was giving CPR, I'm looking around and I don't see anybody else. But I had to continue giving her CPR, try to get her to come back all while I'm trying to look for this last, you know, person that they were screaming for. And once I got to the shore, it kind of seemed like she was, she was starting to come back. So I handed her off. I was back looking for Charles. And I drove around, I drove around, and I'm looking everywhere and you can't, you can't see nothing. I mean, there was maybe a foot, foot and a half of clarity. A couple hours later, they ended up finding Charles, and he was, I mean, he was right there. But I, there was just so much else going on. I had 
two or three other people in my boat that were maybe a half a breath away from getting CPR at the same time, so it was pure chaos. Nate saved multiple lives just in the aspect of when he gunned the boat and got up there close, when he started throwing life jackets, when he started pulling people into the boat, uh, it was just a, a numerous people's lives that were saved. No matter what we're doing, whether it's fishing or, you know, just spending time with the kids, we all feel safe around him. He's that kind of guy that, um, you know, jump in and help you no matter what it is. I just happened to be that guy that day and just at the right place at the right time. Well, after a little bit of time, we were able to organize a picnic up at Big Creek State Park and it was just a really special day. We were reunited with them in September after some time had passed. That day was filled with a lot of uh, joy and happiness to be reunited with Nate and, um, and with their family. It was a pretty awesome day to meet up with them and you know listen to their stories and actually see Lavandria play like a normal little seven, eight year old little girl and it was, it was very humbling. We left that day really feeling like, you know, we were forever connected to this family and um, all because of, you know, this selfless hero. I still talk about how crazy it was. Like, what if I would have turned and went back to the campsite and talked to those, you know, had those campers give me that picture? I truly believe that there was something else involved in that that kind of told me, no, just keep going. And the fact that there was no other boats up there, like, no, just keep, yep, you need to go to that family. That's something told me, just go on over to that family. Like something said that they need your help today.